everyone's going to ask the question. Yes. The dress, yes. Where, what inspired it? Where did it come from? Um, it came from obviously my local area, one of uh, our local designers who I go, often go to for my, what we call our yarn, which is the Vietnamese traditional dress. Um, I felt that it was a very significant moment for our community and for me and for Australians and for me um, to acknowledge obviously that Australia you know, has given my family an opportunity to rebuild our lives and you know I want to embrace the Australian culture but also at the same time not remember and, and know and acknowledge my own her heritage in the Vietnamese tradition uh, dress. A one-off uh, yeah. for today or <laughs> will we see you in, will, will it become <laughs> parliamentary uniform? Well you know what you know, I'm, I'm a proud, you know, Australian of Vietnamese heritage and I want to celebrate that. And it, I think it's, uh, for me, wearing this, um, I thought about it, it's about me celebrating being, being an Australian uh, and the multicultural Australia that we have kind of become as a nation. Well, you certainly did that, sometimes painfully, uh, recollecting your own journey, quite literally your own journey to this country. Um, for those who, who weren't able to witness the full presentation. How difficult was that? So just describe to us, first of all, what it was that, that you outlined and, and why it pained you so to recall it. Um, look, you know, being on that refu refugee journey, remembering the escape, remembering that boat journey, you know, no matter how many times I tell that, it still gets very emotional. And especially today, because obviously my family was in the gallery, public gallery, and so were other refugees from other, not just Vietnamese, but also, you know, Middle East, like uh, Syrian and all that. They're, they have been through that journey like I have. Um, but recalling that um, was painful because you just remember every single moment. Mm. And it's just, it brings you back. And I, I, <laughs> I want to get over that pain, but um, I don't know if I'll ever get over that fact that um, we were forced to flee and remembering all that. And of your invited delegation who sat in the chamber today, a good proportion of them, no matter which country they came from, have gone through something similar. Is that why they were selected, apart from your family? Of well, course. actually, I did not select them. A lot of people actually just called our office and heard that I was going to give my first speech and wanted to come along. We actually had to cut it off to about because the bus, the buses could, I could only organise, um, I organised it myself, um, you know, uh, I thought initially it was two buses of 100 people, but uh, people ca kept ca calling, and so we capped it off at about 150, 200 really, but then there were other 50 who actually drove up. And you explained in the speech uh, the development of what we might now call your political career, from local government through to that moment where the pennies dropped or the, the lights gone on, I need to do this, I need to run for the seat of Fowler. Uh, what was that? What, what was it you were trying to outline there? Because some people have said, oh, she was just trying to give a swipe to Christina Keneally. Was that purely the motivation? No, I think, I think, I think people's interpretation, they have to really look at the fact. It was the fact it was somebody who was got parachuted in. So it was re reported as well. So I think it was stating a fact I don't think, how could I say it any other way than that was the, the fact. Um, but I think it was about highlighting that, you know, our community wanted somebody from within the community now to stand up and defend and fight for them. And so, and who understand our plight and our journeys and the experience that we've had especially in the last couple of years in particular, have lived through it, the difficulties and the challenges that we've faced as a community. So you reflected on, I suppose, tangible legacies that you were able to achieve for your community in local government. A lot of those can be seen because they're parks or they're public toilets or whatever they may be. What markers do you put down for yourself as a crossbencher in this parliament? Look, I think for me, if I can achieve um, resourcing for our health, uh, for the infrastructure in terms of our roads and our schools, public transport. Um, and, and I think those were the markers I made in terms of, because there's federal funding as well as state funding for hospitals. So I want that achieved for our Fowler community uh, and our schools to make sure that the kids, the young people, the education system are preparing our kids for the future of work, especially with technology and a digital world that we're moving into. Uh, and, and small business. Uh, small business is very important. It is the backbone of our um, country and of our, in particular, our community. 98% of small businesses, are, you know, uh, makes up Fowler. And 
majority of them are people of migrant and refugee background because that's what they do. That's what they do best. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, it's certainly a thriving uh, community, the one you described in your speech. Anyway, a couple of issues of the day for you, Di Lee. Um, fuel, excise, cost of living. We're discussing yes, so much I know. Uh, today. I'm those, uh, about those issues. <laughs> those issues. Uh, I take it we're still marking you down firmly as someone who thinks there's a case to extend. For how long? Look, um, I think that at least for the next six months, at least minimum, uh, because our families, I mean, people are coming to me, those those uh, residents who you saw in the public gallery, those are the ones that would come to me and say, listen, uh, our, our food prices have gone up, petrol prices have gone up, interest rate have gone up. It's just so much for us to actually raise our families and feed our families. So, you know, we, there need to be some kind of uh, alleviation in terms of the, the, the high rises the cost of, of living so I really ask the government and you know they've many times I've asked and continue to ask in, in until prices stabilize mm -hmm. uh, until there are some uh, opportunities for our community to really get jobs and uh, get small businesses kind of rolling again on those measures though things are going to get worse in all likelihood before they get better won't they on, on interest rates alone looking yeah. towards tomorrow exactly and so that's that's the thing interest rates going to go up again and 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 so for me this is no better time than just to say okay how can we alleviate for families for families in Western Sydney, for families of Fowler who are on low socioeconomic, uh, you know, 20% less income than the rest of Australia, how can we make their lives easier just for another short, short time?